Okay. Uh huh. What's up, everybody? We're back again. It's episode 260. Holy cow! Of the Dad Bod wow. Golf Pod. Happy Monday. The weather here is absolute garbage. So uh, if you're listening <laughs> to this and you're and you're you're close to us and you're experiencing the same garbage, hopefully this cheers you up, and uh, we can have some fun and talk some golf and get your week going. So. Uh, tonight's episode is brought to you, and every episode is brought to you by Bet Online, the number one sports betting website in the world, the whole wide world. Wow! On the ho- wide web, or uh, w- whatever, on, on the internet, on the internet, it's the it's the best one there is. Uh, <laughs> the 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 AFC and the NFC championships have been played. The Super Bowl is set. When we're recording this, uh, it's about halftime of the Bengals and the Chiefs. So if you wanted to go hit a little hit a little halftime line, uh, second half line, you could you can do anything. But the Super Bowl odds are going to be out. They're going to be a ton of prop bets. We're going to talk about some of those fun prop bets uh, when they're released. Um, sign up today. Use coupon code believe B L E A V. Get a fifty percent welcome bonus. Give them a hundred bucks. They're going to give you that hundred bucks in in betting money, and then throw fifty dollars uh, more on top of it. So, mm. um, have a blast, make some money, bet online. It's where the game starts. Uh, ben, uh, we talked about this. We've talked about this all last week. But Tory, uh, the Farmers um, Open or whatever you want to call it, Championship uh, at Tory Pines was this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, we we'd say that's pretty much the kickoff. That's like opening day for us. Uh, in, in if in reality, for as far as the PJ Tour, it's a lot of times people's debut. It's a lot of times it's uh, you know one of the early best fields, and um, it was a good tournament. It was a good tournament. Uh, it always is weird. They uh, they did not want to compete with football, so it ended on a Saturday, which was that a little is. bit a little bit different. Um, but uh, Max Homa shoots a final round uh 66 uh mm-hmm. to go and take the farmers insurance open that's the name of it, the farmers insurance open he's a cali guy plays good in california and mm-hmm. i called it i called it uh when we play now granted i think when we had the episode on friday i think he was he was like f- maybe six shots back i think he was or four or five shots yes. back. yes yeah yeah he's he, not he, it, that was who that's who I, I just felt like you know he'd go on a run and he did he did uh keegan bradley also made a charge it's good to mm-hmm. see him kind of back um and playing good golf uh the top five of the leaderboard was great homa bradley morikawa with the gala and sun jm i mean that's a star st- and then sam Ryder. that's a st- uh, and then john roms uh just you know right back there his his winning streak ended at two um yeah not a um not yeah, a super so t- go ahead. He had he had a tough go, man. The 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 final group were all over par. Uh Tony Finau, John Rahm, and Sam Ryder. Um yeah. and I mean, and they I mean they were playing right behind the guys that were kicking their butt with uh Bradley being two groups in front of Homa and then Homa being right in front of them. Uh, Homa and Murakawa, and of course uh Murakawa, if he uh, um also shoots six under like uh like Homa did. He shot three under, he shoots six under. He's he and he and Homer are going to a playoff. Um, oh, by the way, when you guys are listening to this, uh, it is Kyle's birthday. So everybody give Kyle uh, yeah. happy birthday. a birthday. Happy birthday there, buddy. Today is uh, today. It will be when you're listening to this. Today is my birthday. 37 so, years old. How about that? Goodness gracious. A lot. Yeah. Don't look a day over 45. Getting, getting there, getting there. I've got some miles on me. How about um, that? Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but I told you before we came on, I said, how much of it is Homer winning it? And how much is Sam Ryder? absolutely blowing it and i sat because i rewatched it this morning because kyle and i played golf on saturday so missed it i had a fantastic time on saturday uh you have to ask kyle in person how how his day was yeah, um it's not good uh, <laughs> uh and they had pretty much mailed it in that sam Ryder was going to win this thing it was either on 12 or 13 or 14 it had to i think it was 14 because i said that's where the jinx came in Ballion, Amanda Balionis, or Amanda, whatever her name is now, she got married. She grabs uh, Sam Ryder's mom out of the crowd, and they walk down a couple of holes with one another. Mm. And she starts talking about her mom gave her wish list and said, my wish list is that I'm there when you make a hole in one. My wish list is there when you get your first win. And here I am. And I was like, oh, oh you did it. That That's how you do what it. what did it. 
That's how you do it. <laughs> Textbook. Uh, uh, and when I saw that this morning, and then he gets to 15, and he doubles. Yep. And then he bogeyed 17, too. I mean, uh, the bogey didn't hurt as bad as the double because the double just it, – it's almost like – he doubles at the same time that Max is birdieing on six on sixteen, because um, yep. uh, Max is a group ahead of him. Max had one of the few birdies on sixteen. All that thing was playing. Uh, it was two twenty five to pin with the wind. They said it was playing anywhere from two forty five to two fifty nine, and he threw an iron up there to have been about, within about ten feet and um, and and made the putt. So he birdies sixteen while behind him Sam is double in seventeen, and that was it. Over. Yep. I mean, uh, double and fifteen. Doubled fifteen, and he and he missed a and he had a like an eight footer for bogey. So like yeah. he was, he, but he and he didn't play the hole bad. That's what that's what like he was yeah. just off the green. He hit the, he just missed a fairway, hit a bomb, mm-hmm. just missed a fairway. Uh, he was in, in the deep deep rough, so like he could bear he could barely advance it. Uh, but yeah. he got it in good position, and he sculled a wedge across the green, and then he chunked yep. his chip, and then. Uh, I mean, I experienced a lot of that Saturday, so I could, I could reckon, I could, I could feel it, uh, feel what he's going through. Yeah, but he no, literally I, played himself out. But that, I blame Amanda, CBS, and his mom. Why do people do that? Like, you got to know better. I don't know because at that point in time, he had both. He was one over on the front nine. Like that could have easily, like it ain't like he was just playing so strong. Like it was just gonna. You know, he was no, going to run away with it. No, at one point in time, Homa had tied the lead twice, but then bogeyed to go back behind it. Like he was right there. Yeah, and you've got that par five that you got to think Homa's probably going to birdie to wrap things up to end it. So or eagle, possibly he has the link to get there and make it eagle. Um, like when CBS decided to do that, and and because apparently they had talked about it before, because Amanda said. You know, we were talking last hole when you and I were walking. Share with everybody what you said, what you told me about the goals. And it was the hole in one. And then be, my goal is to be there and watch him win. And here I am to watch him win. And I was like, mm. oh, he, he's going to look back at that at that broadcast or somebody's going to tell him about it. And he's going to be like, Mom, don't ever do that again. Never, never, never. I appreciate you coming to my tournaments and I'll still pay to put you up every time you come. Do not do any interviews and count all the chickens before they've hatched, please. Yep. Uh, another, I mean, not getting a ton of headlines, but Ricky Fowler, another top 15 finish. So he's got a top, he's got two top tens in the top 15. Yep. Um, sneaky having a good season at 21 on the uh, FedEx cup points. So, uh, got Butch Harmon back on his, uh, teaching him again. Yeah. The Um, swings totally different. He switched clubs. He's gone to, some muscle slash cavity backish type stuff. He's not hitting those little blades anymore. Um, yeah. And so he's, I mean, he shot even on the final round uh, yesterday, but, uh, you know, for the most part, he had a decent tournament. I mean, he finished at five under total. Uh, and, and again, a top 25 finish, which he hadn't seen that he hadn't sniffed the top 25 in probably two, three years. I mean, I would think. So yeah. uh, he's, he, he, yeah, he, and you know he's one of our favorites. We talk about him all the time. I mean, you know, um, Matsuyama made a charge. He w- he had an unbelievable front nine yesterday. He went out in thirty on the front. That's strong. And, and then he had a few bogeys on the back. So he never really it never really caught any miss. He he pulled a Jordan Speed to one putt. He had like a, a almost a tap in birdie. It wasn't tap in. It was like three feet. He it's like he hurried up there to hit it and he ran it by. It's like what are you doing, man? <laughs> so uh that he 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 had a decent day and and Rom, but that just amazed what stuck out in my mind with the round was Rom, Finau, and Sam Ryder all shooting over par in the final group. And the bad part is they showed them most of the damn coverage was on them and they weren't playing well and everybody else is playing up to them. Yeah. The Keegans of the world. I mean, they finally started showing some Keegan Bradley shots. Morikawa. Uh, of course, they showed Homa shots just because Homa's got the local tie-in and all that. But uh, Sahith so Tagala, you didn't get to see him play any until he got to like 15, and he made a charge, at, at, you know, on the final day. So, um, well, Ben, I you're going to get do that. if if you if you commit to the joggers, you're going to get TV time. You're going to get TV time. Yes. Sam Ryder looked awesome. He had like some like they looked like the primo wine color mm-hmm. uh, joggers with black socks, black. <laughs> Uh, like foot joys, black shirt. He looked yep. good. He looked good. Uh, it was a good look. 
I may have to order some of those uh, those wine colored joggers. So I I'm pretty much all in on joggers. I think I'm all in a hundred percent on joggers. Uh, and yesterday was the perfect day. Kyle wore them yesterday when we played. Yeah, uh, he wore the you wore the navy blue ones, right? You know what yeah. they were. Um, yes. And I even told him when we were out there. I said I wish I'd have worn mine today. Yesterday was like the perfect temperature to wear them, like yep. fifty five to sixty degrees. Beautiful. You don't get too hot. I was getting hot in my pants, but I knew shorts was going to be a bad call. So, and I think that's about what they played in out in San Diego or La Jolla as well. Whenever yeah. uh, they were playing at Toy Tory, they were it was right around fifty to fifty five degrees. Perfect, so, perfect. Uh, if you want to try joggers, uh, check out yes. Primo Golf Apparel. Uh, they're they're one of our. Um, they've been with us for a really long time. Uh, they pretty much. I feel like they were the first big company to push hard uh for the mm -hmm. joggers uh for golf uh in pro golf not like like on on tour and they got several guys on tour that that wear it on the corn ferry a bunch and then several i mean there's a couple on the on the big tour as well um use coupon code dad pod 15 mm -hmm. take 15 percent off your order they got like i don't know 10 12 colors uh, and they're working on if you're not fully committed to the jogger they're working on some pants that will that, that still taper at the bottom, but it doesn't have the cuff at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Just regular, like, you know, just like your Lululemon pants. Uh, they got, they got, uh, polos now. They got the blade collar. They got regular collars. They got hoodies, all kind of stuff. Belts, really good belts at great mm -hmm. value, um, uh, as well. So check them out. Those guys are great. They got everything you need. Um, Primo Golf Apparel. So they're, they, they changed the game. They changed the game, uh, with the jogger. So, so show them, show them some love. Um, moving on, there's a lot more to talk about in this tournament, I feel like, but it's not quite over yet, which I hadn't quite figured out yet, but the, um, they had a rain delay. Is that what it was that yeah, I didn't had know a weather. it rained in the desert? How about yeah, that? The, um, yeah. They had a weather delay that basically they skipped the whole, they skipped the whole round. So they got a, they're doing a day late. The, uh, the hero challenge or whatever in, uh, Abu Dhabi, uh, United or UAE, wherever it is, uh, it's the Dubai Desert Classic. Dubai Desert Classic. There you go. Um, the Hero Dubai Desert mm -hmm. Classic. Uh, Rory, sort of, and, and I'm just guessing he's probably going to go ahead and win it. Um, he shot seven under. I actually had trouble sleeping last night and ended up watching, which last night would have been Saturday night. I, I ended up watching a lot of him, him actually play. So mm -hmm. he went on a tear. Uh, wasn't making anything over like – Six seven feet. He was just every, knocking everything stiff. Oh it, wow! It, well, it, he shot seven was, under. He had the round of the day. It was fun to watch. Uh, so and, and, and like I said, he's got like a three or four shot lead going into you know when we're recording this. He's probably about four or five hours from teeing off, and then mm -hmm. he'll finish around six or seven a.m. today. Like so, when you if, if you listen to this, he's probably just finishing up. Uh, a couple of different ways we can go with this. Um, number one. Um, Patrick Reed had another, uh, classic like rules, Patrick Reed thing, um, where he gets a favorable ruling. Basically, if you saw it, he, he hooks, it, he hooks his ball over in a tree, in the trees and they can't find it. And they're like looking around the tree and then they see there might be a ball up in the tree but there's no way to really positively identify it. And they look at it through binoculars or like through some sort of like something to like zoom it in. He's like, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's my, that's definitely mine, which, you know, it probably was, but there's just no way to, there's, there's there no way. Though, like I read another story. I'm going to cut you off here and tell you okay. this, because this is another reason that I'm pissed off at social media and, and media members in general, because here we are defending Patrick, or at least I am. And I'm fixing yep. to tell you why I'm defending him. Because headline, clickbait, you click on it, and it says Patrick Reed involved in another rules controversy. There was no controversy. When the official came over, before he even allowed Patrick Reed to use his binoculars, Patrick Reed explained to him how he marks up his ball. He puts, he extends the arrow on the Pro V1 and puts a larger arrow on there uh, because he didn't think that the arrow on the Pro V1 is, is like long enough. He said, so it's going to have a, a drawn arrow on there in black. You'll be able to see it if, if that's what shows. And he told him the number, titleless, whatever it is. 
Um, and so then the guy looks up there and he said, is, is that it? And hands him the binoculars. And he goes, yep, that's it. And it was, it was even both tour officials that looked at it said it's exactly what he described before they even allowed him to look at it. Yeah. But yet everybody keeps going. He's cheating again. No, like you got two guys that literally looked at it with him. He described what his ball looked like. And that's the ball they saw before he even saw it. It just so, seems I, I, I'm with you, but it just seems like it. I mean, that was way up there. Like oh, I, it follows him. It, it the controversy stuff follows him. I yeah. mean, you, you know, lo- that you was, lose the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> I mean, there was even a reference to it in the farmers when they had Homa mac- mic'd up on Friday, and um, and his ball embedded just beyond. And as soon as he got in the lead, he says, "I am not touching that. I'm not touching it." We've seen where that leads. You know what that leads to. And he was referring to Patrick Reed sure. in that same tournament doing that. And touching his ball first before calling the official, and yeah. so he he has had controversy. However, this not in, one of them. in this instance, it wasn't. But yet, the low hanging fruit was for the media to grab it and say, "Oh, he's cheating again." It's like, no, no, he cheated before. <laughs> yeah, but he was not cheating this time. Sure. Yeah, you you so once you're a cheater though, you everybody's you're under the microscope. So well, it's 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 one thing the cheater thing. You've heard guys they talk about how they. Um, they'll improve their lie a little bit on the green by moving their mark either right or left of their ball. They're not supposed to do that. And so they say they like do it once. And once they get caught, they don't ever do it again. Well, Patrick Reed's been caught. I think this would have been his, they said this is his fourth time. If this would have been a cheating thing, this would have been his fourth time doing so. It's like, bro, you've got to quit. Like now you've got a reputation. Like you do it once when you did the first time it's like crap. Now they figured me out. I'm a cheater. I got to quit doing it. And you continue to do it. Yeah. So, uh, we had to I talk to some friends. I was on a, on the range. Uh, I don't know. One of the, one of the days into the end of the week on the range, a buddy of mine said, Hey, I got to ask you, are you team Rory or team Patrick? I was like, I'm right now. I'm aggravatedly team Patrick. Like I don't want to be team Patrick, but I'm yep. team Patrick. And he's like, me too, man. I think Rory's being huge. You know, you know what? Well, then we so we're we're mutual friend. This guy and me are mutual friends with Blaine, so Blaine okay. Blaine Barber. So uh, he group texts he group texts uh, Blaine, and he's like, Kyle and I are both on uh, Team Patrick Reed. Uh, how does that make you feel? And he was like, I want someone to explain to me how you could possibly be on Patrick Reed's side on the side of Patrick Reed. I said, This is why because Rory should have said, Hey, Patrick. How are you? How many strokes do you want? I'm about to beat your ass, basically. <laughs> That's what he should have said. Please Instead, don't tell me you put that in a text to Blaine. Blaine's I so did. nice. He, he, he wouldn't say that word. He wouldn't say I ass. did. I did. I did. I did say that. Uh, and instead, he's like, instead, it's, oh, no, I'm not going to talk to you because I'm, you know, my feelings are hurt. And then Rory goes out there and he he's blistering it. He's, he's killing it. Oh, uh, yeah. Especially so like, yesterday's round. He, he if, waxed everybody. Yeah, like so, just do that. Like, just be the better golf. Like, just beat everybody. Like, just beat them. I, I just don't get the the petty the petty child childish stuff. Like, because you can absolutely back it up, and like you're you're going to back it up. Be so. an alpha. You're not being. An, you know where. The, and the fact that the PGA Tour has hung their hat on him, which, by the way, he's all pissed with Reed and his lawyers and stuff for the subpoena. You need to be mad at the PGA Tour. They're the ones that put you up. That's why you were named, because you were one of the ones that was outspoken about Liv and um, and how anti-Liv you were, Mr. Rory. And so now that's why your ass was named in the suit. If you'd have kept your mouth shut, and like Kyle said, just said, let them do what they want to do. I'm going to beat their ass regardless. Wherever they want to play, whenever they want to play, I'm going to beat their ass. Yes. And yeah. Except at Augusta, because I can't win there. You you have to say that. I think I think I think he. I I I bet he gets it done this time. I bet he He, gets it done at 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 Augusta this time. I think he's got his. If he keeps what he's doing up, where he can play well. See, I think the Augusta thing's just mental. I think he just has a trouble, tough time getting over it. I think that one hole years ago has completely screwed him up. That he had like a snowman on. I forgot which one it was. Is that when it was? It was ten. Uh, I think that is just completely royally just – I think when he gets a 10 every time, he's so scared. You can't – have you ever – you've been to Augusta, right? Yeah. So, don't, like, this is way off topic, but, like, that shot, that drive, have you seen where he hit from – where he hit his second shot from? 
that time when he had when he had the big mm-hmm. number. Yeah. I, I I've yet to figure out how Rory McIlroy could have ended up there. Like I I cannot figure out how he went so immediately hard left. Like it had to be like snatch, hosel left, hit a tree, go further left. Like I, I it's 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 mind blowing how. If I remember correctly, I think the tree he the. Kind of what you all said all happened. I think I remember them slowing it down, and I think I remember it hitting the tree and kicking it left. Yeah, but there is I, no tree. That's the thing. Like, the trees that would have got it to where it is, he had to have, like, snatched it immediately left. Like, Yeah, because they're right off the tee box. Not right off, because they play from the tips, but they're 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 – they're far enough – they're far enough down where they could clear them if they decide to go over them with a big cut, but – if he hit a low hooker, yeah, it had to have gone right off the I mean, tee snatch, into those trees. Yeah. yeah. But anyway. I, that's, kind of what I did a couple of times on Saturday. He had to hit some of those. A, a pull going left. Yeah. Basically. A, a, a pull <laughs> hook. And uh, But anyway, getting back to him, I think that he's – these next three years, if he plays well these next three or four years, I think he's at least going to be in the mix. I wouldn't say he wins there because I still think that he's got some demons in his head. I, I mean, clearly – The hole out from the bunker, though. The hole out from the bunker ended it. Yeah, to for what, tie for ninth or something? No, second, man. Solo second. Oh, was that what it was? Yeah, Uh, remember? Funnest time he's ever had playing golf. That's right. That's what he said. Funnest time he's ever had playing golf. And his good buddy, Colin Moore Cowell, was right there with him to do the same thing. Come in second. (laughs) No, but I I just think – I think he's been playing – he's been playing great. Yeah. Uh, And then – he can just turn it on, man. He can turn it on. And like I said, he was making six footers for birdie. Like mm-hmm. not not making bombs. Not I mean, he just throwing it, throwing it up there tight, hitting hitting bomb yeah. drives down there. Uh the only boo-boo that I saw him make uh on 18, he had a four or five shot lead. And on 18, he had like 240, 250 in. And I think he kind of fatted um his three wood a little yeah. bit. He was trying to cut a three wood in. I think he kind of fatted it a little bit, hit it in the water. Then he threw a wedge up there fairly close and missed the putt. So he made bogey. So he dropped back one shot. So he's going to go in with like a three or four shot lead, uh, maybe a three shot lead. Um, and I, more than likely, you know, he's going to, unless he has an, an epic meltdown, which if yeah. he does, then this whole show is going to sound stupid. <laughs> 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 I don't think he will, but I, I, I mean, I will say, getting back to that conversation you had with your buddy and then you involved Blaine in on, yeah. right now, yes, I am team Patrick Reed. Like I told you before we came on the show, I said, Reed right now is four shots off the lead. I hope he goes out there and shoots 10 under, and that makes Rory have to shoot at least five or six under. And uh, Or a, a more epic thing that would happen is if Reed ties him and they have to go into a playoff, and basically they start with a tournament. They – they finished where the tournament started, which was them going at each other, and now they'll be going at each other at the end. I don't think it's going to happen. I think Rory's just played too good of golf right now. Um, having a four-shot lead over him and a three-shot lead over the next guy, uh, who I don't even I don't even recognize the next two names that are tied for second. So I don't think Rory's going to be pressured very much by those two guys. Um, right. so I think really only Reed can make a run at him. I told you that um, – Poulter's down there about five shots off, or no, he's four shots back too. He could. Uh, other than that, every you know, Thomas Peters has got the length to really he shot even today. So if he bounces back and has a five or six under day, he could he could make a run. Um, but other than that, once you get like past the top ten, I think the scores are just too low. Nobody's gonna make a run at him. Uh he's got yep. he's basically he's basically got three guys to fight off, and that's that's probably it. Did you see Phil's comments? Phil Mickelson's comments about yes, Roy's uh, third he, round. Yeah, he had uh, – uh, I got it pulled up. What a great uh, seven under third round by – he even tagged him. That's what I, I do. See, that's yeah. an alpha move, Rory. That is. You tag the – you know what? You're not an alpha because you, you wouldn't have you would have done this. Yeah, Phil's uh, not subtweeting anybody. Um, uh, at Mac, at McElroy, um in Dubai. In Dubai. Uh, all caps. All caps, by the way. To open up a three-shot lead, see if he can finish it off. Watch live final round action from the Middle East on the Golf Channel because the Golf Channel, of course, has also been anti-lib this entire time. So from the, from the Middle East, he's like <laughs> saying several things to let you know that it's the same people that it's the same buzzwords is. they used. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
to be exactly. anti-live. Uh, that, I still true. wonder when it's going to come out that Rory got an appearance fee for this. I mean, we could we should be able to look that up pretty easy. He does. Um, he I think he says he does. He typically open the year here. Is that is that what he said? Because I think he did say this is the first time he's ever won in his season debut. So, um, mm. so I, I wonder if this is the one if he's ever won this before. If this is the one he he opens to, but. Uh, regardless, I don't know why other guys are not. Well, I guess because it's a DP World Tour event, but like, yeah, this is this is one that Bryson's played in that, um, um, a couple of a couple of live guys have played in before. Uh, I don't know that JT or I think Speed has played in this one a couple of times before, and I think they do it just to go over there and get their, you know, their DP World Tour points that they can. Um, yeah, you gotta like get like four, you gotta play four of those events or something like that, the flagship and, events. And since they're definitely not, you know, since the um, since the DJs and and Bryson's are not going to be playing at the Farmers Open and Tory. I mean, I don't know why they wouldn't play in this, but uh, you know, I guess they, I guess they got their schedule uh, already figured out because they they do want those points so they can they can be at the British Open or the Open Championship. Right. Right. Um, Phil did. I, I'm a little bit mad at him though, because right yeah. before that tweet, he had a pretty much of an anti, he had an anti jogger tweet, which really aggravated me. Um, yeah. And I, and I think he's trying, I think he was trying to be like, y'all don't let us wear shorts, but you let this guy wear joggers with his ankle showing with ankle sock. Like, what are we, what are we doing? But then he, then he attacked the style. He said, you know, I'm no fashion guy. Yeah, but there are some things I won't ever understand. In other words, he did, he was not a fan uh, of that look, and uh, that makes, I, makes me. I it. think that that tweet is supposed to be an anti PGA Tour tweet. Oh sure. Um, um I don't sure. think it was a slant on joggers as much, or definitely not a slam on Sam Ryder. I mean, Phil's never going to wear joggers, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, you know, because that was when Lib said that they were going to allow players to wear shorts. And PJ was like, we would never do that. That's not golf. That's not professional. Blah, blah, blah. It, why I picked that time, it's got to be anti-PGA because joggers have been around for a while. Ricky tried to pull it off because Puma made him some a few years ago, and it just didn't take because they bunched up at the bottom. They didn't look as clean as these look, like the Primo ones that you and I have. Yes. I think I think once they went to that clean look like Primo does, because Primo does a good job if you can get short, regular or long yeah and you used to when you bought joggers it was just one length so they all bunched up at the bottom if you had short legs like ricky fowler so they didn't look good but now that you can get fitted i think that joggers are here to stay oh yeah i think they're going to take over they're going to take over um but i don't take over because the fat guys aren't going to wear them that's true that's true but it's getting the game is getting more athletic more younger so i think there's going to be a lot more dudes uh, where let me tell you something that should take over uh, in your golf bag, and that is your Blue Tees rangefinder. Uh, yes. That should take over uh, the number one item that you want to make sure you have outside of your clubs. You got to have a rangefinder to play golf, uh, play golf fast, play golf efficient, and play golf good. Uh, and there's no reason to pay the top dollar anymore when you got a Blue Tees uh, rangefinder that has all the features that the top guys have at a fraction of the price. Save big, use coupon code DADBOD, take another 10% off already incredibly low, mm -hmm. an, already, an already incredibly low price. Uh, and, you know, why not? You got all, like I said, you got the toggle on and off slope. So if you play in tournaments that don't allow it, you can just toggle it off, locks the buzz lock onto the pin, the magnet, the nice carrying case, scan mode. We don't even talk about that that much anymore. Scan mode where you can just like shoot trees and bunkers and no – kind of chart the course uh as okay so that that came in big yesterday i wanted to mention that the scan mode because there was i forgot what hole it was it was on the back because i told kyle i didn't trust the yardage because the darn wind was blowing so i couldn't keep the damn range finder still yeah so i just flipped over to scan mode and basically started shooting everything that was semi close to what the pin looked like and i was able to finally lock in my yardage and get what i wanted just because i mean on the windy days like that it's i mean it's you know all the flags, we've got the little thing at the top. It usually, but when the wind's blowing and the flag's whipping and you're kind of moving like this out in the fairway, it, you know, you put on the scan mode and you can figure it, it'll, it will hit something. I can promise yeah. you that. Yep. It's great. It's a great feature. Uh, save big, 
uh, and just there's don't don't go spend six seven hundred dollars on a rangefinder anymore. It's right. Just dumb. You get you can get Bluetooth speakers, uh, wireless Bluetooth speakers, uh, along with the rangefinder, all kind of other swag. Uh, it's great. Blue tees, blue tees, uh, range finders is where range finders start. I don't know. It's just, <laughs> they're, they're awesome. They're awesome. And they don't cost a ton. So I was giving them that tagline. They didn't even for it, but I love it. There you go. All right. So let's, uh, let's wind it up with a, would you rather I'm oh, going to amend it a little bit. Okay. I'll give you three options. Okay. I'll oh, give you okay. three options. You get to pick. We talked about world golf ranking, you know, John Rahm was doesn't really understand the the calculations. You know, Greg Norman's like number two all time uh, f- uh, as far as most weeks at number one, but nobody really ever talks about it. Uh, is it really that like desirable? And then you got the FedEx Cup. Uh, you know, being the best golfer of the year essentially, uh, winning mm-hmm. if you win the FedEx Cup. So I'm going to give you three scenarios. You can choose this. This is for one year. One time, that's it. Okay. Uh, you can be world golf number one for the whole mm-hmm. year. Uh, you can win the FedEx Cup one year, or you can win one major that's not the Masters. What do you take? I'm taking, I'm still going my original thought. I'm still going FedEx Cup winner. Okay. Uh, Cause that means you've, you've won some decent tournaments you don't have to win all majors because you can win you can i mean you don't have to win a tournament no you can you can finish top 10 a bunch and you can be right up there at the top and yeah. uh and so uh you number one you're going to make a lot of money throughout the year and then you're going to make that big chunk of change at the I'll end take that you got to win the last tournament but if yeah. you're if you're up there you got to you you get the lead you know you you get to have the the Yes, you get a huge lead. If you can be number one going into that last tournament, you get a really big head start. So uh, I, I told you, I take that. I mean, and one of, a part of the reason is what you were just talking about, about being ranked number one. Um, you know, you got Tiger. That's never going to be attainable. Uh, and it, it does not – and I, I understand you broke it down for me, and you you said, well, you know, Rom's got to also look at the formula where guys that – finish a little bit better than you or that finish second that are ahead of you, then you don't get as many, you know, they still get world ranking point, that kind of thing. Cause we talked about how Ron brought that up because Ron made a good point. He said, man, I've won like six times out of the last four months, dating back to the last season and moving into this season. He's like, and I hadn't even moved up in the world rankings. Like that's stupid. And I agree with him. I think that is stupid. I mean, I understand the formula and how, it also depends on who you beat and who finishes where and all that kind of stuff. But if you're winning, if you beat out 120 golfers that week and you've done it six times and, you know, in the last eight tries or whatever, damn it, you should be number one. I'm sorry. That's just the way I feel. I mean, at some point in time, you got to look at wins and losses. And uh, I don't think they factored that in. But I, I'd have to go FedEx Cup just because that's turned out to be one of my favorite things. I, you know, some people don't like it. Some people are like FedEx Cup is stupid. Then they get a head start at the end when they go uh, to Atlanta. I'm I'm a big fan. I like it. I like the way the process works. I think it's great. Uh, sure. I, I, I've compared it to when you get the big head start in Atlanta. Everybody's like, you get the big head start. I was like, yeah. And NCAA tournament, guess what? The number one ranked team gets to play the 64th ranked team. Like, that's, yep. how, that's, that's how that is. You yep. get – you get rewarded at the end of the season for having a good season. That's how that works. Yep. So yep. I mean, that's a it. good, that's a very good, that is a very good comparison. Um, I like that, but I just don't understand how this doesn't get more talk about being the world number one. I think though being the number one golfer in the whole world, like FedEx Cup is only the PGA tour. Like right. there's there's DP World Tour there's I mean there's other dudes out there and then but like you know being the number one of all of them like I kind of feel like that's a very I mean there's got to be a number one so there's probably a lot there's a lot of number ones but like just being number one in the world it just I, I don't know that's you're you're in a uh, you're an extremely extremely elite elite group of golfers. Um, and a lot of those that go towards that, um, like the, you know, the WGC events and that kind of stuff. I mean, you're that's the tough. You got to I mean, be winning those. We love, we love Augusta. Kyle's right though. That is one of the weakest fields as far as golf is concerned. When you go to Augusta, 
Um, same thing with any of those invite tournaments, you know, like uh, Jack's tournament at Memorial. I mean, that's invitational. And so if you don't get picked, you, you could be – I mean, he usually invites the best golfers, but still, if he right. decides not to pick you, like DJ not getting picked last year, then, you know, that's just – and I think – Kyle, though, do you think, even though you said that, you're going to go with World, is that diminished now that Liv has been created? Because you got DJ that's up there in the top 25, and he doesn't even play any PGA Tour events, and he only plays a limited amount just so he can establish points on the DP World Tour. That's a good point. Um, I'm so if he can I'm, be top 25 not playing in the last two years on the I still tour, think so. I still think so because, I mean, in reality – in in reality, how many dudes on the D on the live are really going to challenge? Like, are you really are really going to challenge for that number one? Cam Smith is number he's number four right now, still mm-hmm. somehow. And then who else? DJ maybe healthy Brooks. I, I, Cam I, DJ I, possibly Brooks, and then I don't. It's a maybe severe. Bryson. I, I mean, are you? But are you really? Are you really? Losing a lot of like would be competition. I, I don't know. I just don't think there's that many. Maybe Abraham answer because he'll play in a lot of um there's no way. He'll never be number world <laughs> he was never gonna be world number one. No, not world number one, but I mean he'll challenge to be up there at the top and knock people back just because he plays in all those dead gum uh South American events and stuff like that that establishes yeah. points. Um just I still say his- yes. I still say yes just because I, I don't think you, this huge swap. I mean, the freaking top ten right now, uh you have Rory Scotty. Rom, Cam Smith, Cantlay, Xander, Zalatoris, Colin Morikawa, Justin Thomas, Matt Fitzpatrick. So you're a number one. If you're number one out of those ten, like you're a you're an amazing golfer. <laughs> you're you're absolutely fantastic. And I would I think that to me, I don't think the I don't think the official world golf ranking number one gets enough. I don't think it's enough. I, I think it's I think it's awesome. I think it's the coolest thing next to winning a major. But I still would take being number one over just winning one major because you could be um, Danny Willett and like everybody makes fun of you, like because you're yes or Trevor Immelman and like you're you know even though you won a major, it's like people kind of mock you. Like no, I don't feel like really anybody would ever mock the world number one, like ever. You know what I mean? No, because I'll say that you until you get past probably twenty. I think all these guys could all challenge to be world number one, and all of them are on the PGA Tour. Oh yeah, except Every for single. except except for um, what's his name, Cam Smith. You know, and then Joaquin Neiman's right there at twenty two, which he's probably dropped some since you know, whatever he yeah, couldn't play. But see, this thing like the Joaquins and even the Shane Lowry's, who's above him, or Brian Harmon, um, you know, Keegan Terrell. You know, some of these guys, are they really guys when they show up at a tournament, you'll probably think, all right, that's an automatic top 10. So you can, you can, you can actually say out of the top 10 on this list, if they show up at a tournament, they're a favorite to win. Yes. See, John Rahm was plus 350 to win at Tory, which is like absurd. That's so absurd. So once you get back low. down to, like, once you get below 20, Shane Lowry's not going to Tory and being, favored to win that, that just ain't gonna happen right and so yeah I, that is amazing though that cameron smith of course he didn't go live until the end of the season so i mean technically he hadn't had a chance for uh to drop off and then when you look um, when i'm looking at curl uh rankings and it talks about events played i mean that's one reason scheffler's up there he's played in 52 events which is like six or seven or eight more than everybody else so yeah <laughs> he's racking up racking up the points yeah all right. So you go world number one. I go FedEx Cup winner. Okay. I like it. I, which I, means I, which means I can't play one. on I can't play on the live tour. Um and make a ton of money. But that's fine. Well, I can't play on the live tour and become world number one. More you can't if you're Cameron Smith, I guess. Unless you're unless you're Cam <laughs> Smith and you win all four majors. Then yes. You know. <laughs> then you'd be number one. That's how that works. <laughs> I'm anxious to see how I'm so anxious to see how they play in the at the Masters. I think that's just gonna be that's going to be so, so incredible. And I'm going to be there for a practice round. I'm hoping I'm going to wear a live golf hat 
Oh my gosh. I can find one. How hilarious. They may, they may kick you out. <laughs> yeah. You know, they may say you're not wearing that here. I, I will say, and you and I talked about it on one of the previous pots. I know we got to get out of here, but um, it, this court, it, the Augusta sets up for the Cam Smiths, DJs, P. Reeds of the world. I mean, they they could legit be on that front page leaderboard come Sunday, and that will have some people on the PGA Tour puckered up Pucker. because – if they finish on, if somebody finishes on the front page of the leaderboard, even if they don't win the darn thing, these other majors have yet to announce whether they're going to let them in or not. They got to, because people are going to be like, "That's the best kind." Like they clearly, they're making a run. They're they're vying for a championship and on a on a major. So uh, they haven't made that announcement. I think they probably will at some point, but they haven't yet. So, um, hey, I did have to make fun of you a little bit too about our round yesterday. Um, Go ahead. Kyle lost his wedge. He I did, did a faux pas. He lost it. I think I found it. But if you're an AU club member and you're listening, don't pick up Kyle's wedge and take it home. <laughs> we got cameras out there. We got game cameras. The, we know. We know we're watching. Yeah, I was playing terrible. <laughs> I probably threw it around a little too much. So you threw it, but that's not the hole you lost it on. I don't think. I think yeah, you used I'm, it again I'm, in another hole when you actually were behaving yourself. Probably felt bad for how bad you were playing before and cussing yep. at me. Yeah, <laughs> fussing at you. You were cussing, you were cussing me, cussing the sport, cussing the game, cussing your clubs. I hated it. Cussing hated the golf it. cart. You were just mad at everybody. I hated every every minute of that round. No, I'm just kidding. I had fun. I just was frustrated. <laughs> I'd been playing good golf and then I played just played really bad. And I probably just had too much to drink, more than likely, is why I played bad. But uh anyway, we're get out, we're gonna get out of here. It happens. Uh so uh We'll bounce back. We'll bounce back. So I have a great week. Uh, we'll talk on Wednesday. Uh, let's see what happens. We'll maybe talk about Rory's uh, a little bit more about Rory's win or maybe his epic collapse. Uh, it would have to be an epic collapse. So uh, y'all have a great start to week, and we'll talk back soon. It's episode two hundred and sixty of the yes. Dad Bod Golf Pod, and we're always, always stroking. stroking.